Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast with your host, Charles. Enjoy. Hello, and welcome to episode 23 of the Crypto Entrepreneurs Podcast. I'm your host, Charles, and today we're sitting down with Thomas Schultz to talk about startup culture and his creation, the Cha-Ching Wallet. Tom, how you doing today? Friend, how you doing? I'm doing well. Thanks for asking. Um, so before we jump into you know the projects that you're working on, uh, can you just give us a little bit of background on what you were doing before you found cryptocurrencies? Yeah, so I was a student at George Mason University. So I've been I've been going there for the last few years. I was majoring in computer science, and you know honestly, I wasn't involved in too much. I always had like the knowledge of wanting to start a startup, be involved in some type of business or other. And I knew that from a very early age that I resided and and thought of wanting to be my own boss. You know, I really found that not that I didn't like working as an employee or something like that. I just knew that I, I immediately would find inefficiencies in, you know, the way businesses are run and stuff like that, that I would you know, think to myself, like, maybe I could do it better and maybe that I could do it in a way that, you know, I agree with. So I kind of knew from an early age that, you know, going to college, my goal was that, you know, halfway or three fourths the way through that I wanted to leave and start my own business. Now, um, did I think that actually would happen? Uh, I don't know. But it's pretty crazy that, you know, I ran into crypto and then, you know, divulged, divulged from there. And, you know, since then, I've left school and started running this business. It sounds like you never, you know, had that graduation kind of move into a real job and then make that switch to entrepreneur lifestyle in the sense. It's just at, from an early age, you've always decided that, you know, traditional, a traditional job wasn't for you and that, you know, like you were saying, you would find these little inefficiencies and, you know, try to make things better. And that's how you kind of made that transition because you're always trying to do something better than what the current status quo is. So really appreciate you giving us a little background on that. Now, can you jump into Cha-Ching and can you give us just an overview of what it is and why you created it? Yeah, so first um, I'll tap into why we created it. And you know, I'm, I'm running this business with two other people, Jacob and Sebastian, they're my co-founders. And uh, you know, the, the reason why we started Cha-Ching is actually – it's a funny story. So when I first got into crypto and, you know, I got into crypto in August of 2017 and, you know, that's when I first heard about cryptocurrency. I had a guy at my, in my business fraternity that I was joining and he, you know, he told me a little bit about crypto. He told me a little about what it was. He, the first thing he actually told me about was XRP and, and Bitcoin. And then he actually invested in cryptocurrency all the way back in early 2015. Uh, actually, no, earlier than that. He invested earlier than that. And then he showed me his wallet and how much Bitcoin that he has and, you know, what Bitcoin is and all that stuff. So I initially got in for speculative purposes, as I'm sure a good amount of people have, and, you know, make some quick bucks while I'm in college and see how this goes. And I was like, okay, so, you know, I wanted to learn about more what it is, you know, how to get involved, all that type of stuff. And I was like, okay, so like there's Bitcoin and XRP and then I found coin market cap and I saw that there was, you know, hundreds, thousands more. And I was like, okay, so I want to get involved in, and buy other coins that exactly aren't, you know, as costly as Bitcoin. Obviously, I didn't understand market cap, circulating supply and all that stuff. I just thought, okay, I want to buy a lower costing coin and figure that out. So I was like, okay, so, you know, everyone was saying you need to buy Bitcoin, move it over to a different exchange and then buy altcoins, you know, cryptocurrencies that have a lower price. So I was like, okay. And, you know, I did some research into a bunch of other projects and just to really figure out what this was. And I was like, okay, I want to buy this coin called Metal. It is an ERC-20 token. And, you know, it made crypto easier. I saw that there was wallet addresses and, and all this other stuff like that. And, you know, Metal was saying that they're trying to be the wallet that, you know, fixes a lot of problems. And I was like, you know, I can I can reside with that because I'm, I'm certainly confused at best. Um, like, sent some Bitcoin over to this exchange. I forget the exchange. It wasn't Binance. And I bought this coin called Metal. And I was like, all right, I don't want to, I don't trust this exchange. The user experience, the UI is, is garbage at best. And I was like, I want to move this over to Coinbase. And I want to keep my metal on Coinbase. And I saw that the prefix of 
metal as an ERC20 token was identical to that of Ethereum. So I was like, okay, so it starts with OX. So I'm sending it, I sent it to my Ethereum address on Coinbase. And obviously, as you know, that doesn't work. So <laughs> the money is gone forever. Uh, it completely got wiped. And that was about half the money I put in, like the, half the money that I owned. You know, I had 200 bucks. I was working at a, uh, a car dealership at the time. And, you know, I didn't have much money. You know, I was, you know, I was just a college student trying to make some side cash as I'm going about my education. And 100 bucks, gone. Completely vanished. Nothing you can do about it. And I was sort of freaking out, emailed Coinbase, all this stuff. I literally took a screenshot of the blockchain wallet address to which I sent it to. And I was like, here, you can literally retrieve it right there. Please get it for me. And, uh, <laughs> you know, obviously not really understanding all of what this is about. And it just really blew me away that there was nothing available that would avoid this problem. I mean, you see bank accounts and stuff like that. You're not transacting nowadays with like, you know, routing numbers and account numbers. People are using Venmo, PayPal, Cash App, et cetera. And it's like crazy to me how, you know, I saw all these people that are pretty smart creating all these technologies, blockchain, like, you know, said it was an immutable ledger. You can't be hacked, all this stuff like that. Yet people are losing money because they're sending it to the wrong location like myself. And I was like, you know what? There's, there's a better way to do this. There's a better way to go about this. And, and, and I figured, you know what? I want to I want to definitely help it out because I did research and found that no one else is like specifically targeting like this wallet address problem. Like you should be able to send value to people with a username. And that's kind of how the idea of Chichang started. Now, um, what we're doing is a little different, you know, more than that. Now we've you know, we've been working on this for, you know, about a year and three months now. So it's been uh, quite some time. And, you know, the idea divulged into much more than that. And the, our overall vision and, you know, what we really want to accomplish with this is we really want to make the overall cryptocurrency user experience a lot easier and more streamlined. And, you know, we see that there's a lot of different pools of where cryptocurrency is used today, specifically today. You know, you have people, you have, you know, uh, portfolio trackers like Blockfolio. You have wallet services like Bread Wallet. You have coin swapping services like Shapeshift. You have services like Coinbase that get you in the market, you know, have fiat liquidity. And then you have, um, you know, the, the final tier there um, aspect. You know, you have some services that have multiple of these services in one spot. Oh, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. The exchanges, my bad. Exchanges. So that's, that's the, the last aspect there. And we see that all these different tiers are really playing a bigger picture. Every single one of those locations are extremely valuable to crypto. However, the problem is that they're scattered, right? You know, you have to have all these different applications just to own your cryptocurrency. And that was one of the problems that I actually saw and had myself. You know, like I have like, you know, three different wallets, five different exchanges, you know, several different tracking apps. You know, I have to use Coin Market Cap to look at the entire uh, statistics of the entire place. And it's just, you know, it's not streamlined. If you look at brokerage accounts like Charles Schwab, you know, E-Trade, very simplistic ways of trading stocks. And everything that you need to trade stocks is in that one location. You don't have to hop all over the place to be able to do everything. So that was the kind of the, the idea that we want to essentially take everything that's crypto and put it in one spot. Obviously, while maintaining security and making sure that everything is good, but we want to put everything crypto in one spot. And now what I mean by that is, is giving people the ability to add all their favorite accounts, being at first Binance and Coinbase. So you can add your favorite exchanges in one spot. And then you can also, you know, track your portfolio without having to manually update values, like, you know, the way you have to do on Blockfolio. So we pull the information directly for you. So that way, you, every single trade you make is directly pulled and you can see how your portfolio is doing spanning all your different accounts and then on top of that again going back to the wallet address problem you can actually send money to all your other accounts or to friends we recognize that the friend aspect is definitely not something that's going to be popular at first you know due to the fact that crypto the main use case of crypto is speculation right now that you'll actually be able to send value between all your accounts just using usernames you know you can tap on yourself and then select the exchange that you want and move the value between accounts and then you know as for the other tiers like liquidity uh coin swapping and so on we're going to be adding that in later versions and the, the overall vision is to essentially put control and power, you know, back in people's hand as that's what crypto is doing in the first place. And that and what that really means is giving people the ability 
to own their own value. So right now there's these exchanges that are out there. Um, you know, they're all centralized exchanges. Every exchange that you operate on is a centralized exchange today. And we, moving forward, we really want to be able to change that by, you know, introducing a service that allows people to have control of their own funds, you know, a non-custodial wallet, and be able to essentially move value between all your favorite accounts, you know, like, you know, say you have money on Binance. You have, you know, say, uh, you know, a thousand bucks on Binance, you're trading it all day and you make, you know, say, in this bear market, you say you make 50 bucks in that day. And most people leave those funds on exchange. You know, you keep your cryptocurrency on exchange, you log off and, you know, a, a, uh, a maintenance happens and everyone's on Twitter spamming, you know, CZ, Binance, are my funds safe? Ooh, are my funds safe? And uh, like, are my, am I good? And that type of fear, I think, is absolutely directly goes against what all this is about in the first place. You shouldn't have to worry about your funds being safe. The whole point of crypto is literally owning your own money. So what we want to do is you trade this value and then you can move it to in a simple, easy manner in one location, move it from that spot over to a non-custodial wallet. So that way your cryptocurrency is in a safe place while you're not trading and you wake up in the morning and you want to go back to trading, boom, you can move it from that wallet immediately over to Binance in our app with like three clicks. And it's as simple as that. We cover, You covered a lot there. Uh, first, I just want to say, I am so sorry that that happened to you with the sending that crypto, trying to get it back to Coinbase, and then realizing half my money is gone. <laughs> I think if something like that had happened to me when I was first starting, I would have given up on it completely. So glad you stuck with it. Um, you know, just as an overall, you know, kind of aha, uh -huh, what I was getting from that is that this user experience is something that's most important to you guys. Like you said, I have, you know, six different mobile wallets. I've got four different exchanges that I have to hop onto. Um, Coinbase, I'm then tracking everything on Blockfolio. And it's just a pain in my ass, to be honest with you. Um, so it sounds like you're kind of just consolidating all of this. Um, and I really like that, you know, you had this evolution of, here's a problem that I dealt with when I first got into crypto. Let me make it so that other people don't. And I think that this consolidation and this streamlined process will make it simple and easy for people who, you know, sign up for a few exchanges, are tracking their crypto. They've got their payments, you know, coming through something like Coinbase. Um, and then at the end of the day, like you're saying, if they're trading and they want to get it back to a non-custodial wallet, it's all in this app. So, I really appreciate you giving us a brief overview of what Cha-Ching is, why you created it. It sounds like something that a lot of people in this space desperately need. Um, so I'm excited for it. I'm excited to see what, what comes in the future. Um, so you've talked about this as kind of, you know, you've always been interested in startups and technology. You were a computer science major um, in college. So can you really dive into the details of, you know, the startup culture and what it takes to successfully navigate it because I feel like, you know, startups are popping up left and right and everyone's trying to get involved, but a lot of people don't know how and they don't know how to do it correctly. So you're going through this process. You've been through this process. Can you give our listeners, you know, what they need to know? Yeah. So first, first and foremost, you really want to, before you even get into a startup, before you even get started and before you even start working on something, you need to find people that are going to not only add direct value to the overall project that you're trying to start, but you also need to be able to sit down with these people and realize that you're about to get into something that is insane, literally insane. And when you get started, you have to working with you're going to become incredibly close to you're you're going to become super close to them and you're going to understand and learn just tons about their life because you're working with them so often so it's important that you know that they're bringing value to the project and that they're going to really pull equal amount of weight and really bring you to the location that you want to be overall and then on top of that these people that you're working with you know they got to have a good head on their shoulders and what i mean by that is like a good mindset like a good attack mentality, the ability to persevere, the ability to go through all of this and get started and work. When I actually, 
when I got started, so we were working on a, a different project. It's just this investment group, just trying to help people in our in our local area learn about what crypto is. And we started off with six people. There, there were six of us. And three of them, like, stopped working with us pretty quickly. You know, that's kind of how I met my other two co-founders. And three of them left pretty quickly. And the moral of that story is, is you want to start something fully well knowing those people that you're getting into it with. These people that... I got started with at least with the the educational bit i didn't know them too well you know i mean i kind of knew them you know we you know had this little club going at george mason and, and that's how we started and you know they disbanded like literally within a month and if you're creating a startup and you're doing that if someone if these people disband from you really quickly uh that's gonna suck you know that's that's really gonna suck because running a startup by yourself like by yourself is like insane like i can't i literally cannot imagine running cha-ching right now by myself like it is something that is just super imperative because it's like it's it gives you that thought and comfortability that you're going through this with somebody else because it's super like you literally have to put your entire life on hold like like i said i i left college you know i've definitely had um you know problems with you know relationships family friends like a lot of people that I used to hang out with at my university on a consistent basis, I don't see anymore. I don't talk to anymore because I'm so absolutely wrapped up in doing all of this. You know, the way that we've been managing and working through today, like, I think this is something that, you know, before I made, before I created a startup that I, you know, read about, heard about, but I guess never understood is the ability to persevere. I think that is something that a lot of people have no idea about when getting into a startup. Like, this process, you know, like so far I've been, like I said earlier, I've been doing this for about a year and three months now. And like the amount of ups and downs that all of this brings and entails is, it genuinely is astonishing. And it's, it's just something that I never thought would happen. Like I, I thought that, oh, okay, like, you know, create the startup, make this product and, uh, you know, we're good. We're getting started, we're rolling through it and it's all, it's all chilling. Um, not the case at all. Like literally, like I have, I've watched Gary V quite often and you know, you're in the mud. You're, you're in the mud. You're like, you are genuinely in the mud. And that is something that like, it is just, it's just a lot of people have to be aware of. And, and more of that, like when you're going through a startup, a lot of people, I feel like I've met other startups, talked to other people. I feel like a lot of people are not self-aware about their team and their product, which are the two most important aspects of building a business. Like, um, and, and, and you can see that all across crypto, right? Like how many crypto startups and blockchain startups are literally not solving a damn thing? It's tons, tons. There's so many coins out there. There's so many projects out there that literally do nothing, that literally bring no value, that don't do anything, and they're not going anywhere. And it's because they don't know their customer. They don't know what's genuinely needed of them. And it's like when we first got started, before like I even decided that, hey, I'm going to start the startup, like I wanted to genuinely know. Like I, I had the idea in about September. Um, I had the idea about early September, like after I first started hearing about it and getting in in August. And we didn't start the startup until like, you know, December. We didn't start the startup until December. And that was because we really wanted to make sure and understand as to whether or not this was a genuine problem. Like, is this something that people actually go through or is everyone just good? And then after seeing that, I was like, okay, so there's a problem. There's a problem. Okay, cool. Now it's time to solve that problem. Like, and not only solve that problem, but make the best possible product for people to grasp and use on a daily basis. And like, and, and then going further with self-awareness in your startup, a lot of startups, I've read, I've read plenty of articles online, how companies fall apart because there's disconnections between founders. There's problems between founders. And that all stems from the fact that you guys are on different pages. Something that I recommend everybody listening to this podcast is watch the Simon Sinek video on YouTube or even read the book called Start With Why. And that right there I have found personally has solved literally every problem in my, any, any problem that I've ever run into, I've solved with that formula. You start with why, you then move forward to how you like go about that problem, and then you say what it is. And just by having that inside out rather than outside in mentality, I find literally helps tremendously when going through a startup on every front. I really appreciate you going through all of that. 
there was so much that you covered there. So I'm just going to do a little recap uh, for everyone who's listening. So the first thing that you brought up, which I think is essential to any project, is find a team. Uh, you know, I talk to a lot of entrepreneurs who are doing this solo and they say that it, everything becomes very overwhelming and at times they want to give up. Um, and so having that team to bounce ideas off of, to go through with, you know, just going through the motions with another person uh, will really keep you going and keep you on track. Um, so then you, you mentioned find a team and then create a product. Uh, you talked about finding finding a problem and solving it with that product, uh, which is exactly what you did from start to finish. When you got introduced into cryptocurrency, you saw this problem of, hey, I sent money to the wrong address. I sent a crypto to the wrong address and I lost that forever. I'm going to make sure that I don't, that no one else has to go through that. And that's where you created your product. Like you said, there's so many projects out there that are just going nowhere because they don't solve any problems. I think they're just trying to get involved with this movement and play off the hype in a sense. Uh, so to anyone who's trying to start up a company, um, I think it's essential that you know you find something that is an actual problem and that you solve it. You don't just get involved for this money grab or this riding the wave of cryptocurrencies. Um, and then lastly, you kind of talked about perseverance and the fact that this will consume your life and that you know, that kind of ties back into if you've got a team that's with you and you've got people who are supporting you and working with you, uh, you'll be able to kind of persevere through the tough times. Um, you said you lost friends, uh, you've lost relationships, you've kind of lost contact with, not lost contact, but contact less with family. Um, so you dropped out of school for God's sake. Uh, so just understand that this really will consume you. Um, and then lastly, you talked about that book that you recommended, Start With Why. Uh, for anyone who's interested, I'll have a link to that book in the description. You can get it downloaded. Uh, it's a great read. Uh, so I really appreciate you walking us through kind of the whole startup culture, what it's really going to take to get involved and get your project up and running. Because uh, I feel like so many people are on the cusp of that. They're trying to figure out you know, how they can turn their idea into an actual product. And I feel like with these key insights, it'll be much more helpful. So I really appreciate that. Now, moving forward, um, what are you guys most excited for in 2019? Honestly, the most the the number one thing I'm excited for in 2019. Um, are you talking about on a crypto basis or in general both? So <clears throat> I mean both, but more importantly, with regards to the projects that you're working on, specifically Cha-Ching, are there any big things in the pipeline that are coming up? Oh yeah, yeah. So um, okay, yeah. So what am I excited about most in 2019? Um, well, so far I'm pretty excited that we're going to be closing our seed round pretty soon right now. So that's uh, that's pretty exciting. And then uh, we're we're really excited to you know essentially really move forward with a team of people and start bringing out the the first version of our application and um you know really closely we're going to be dropping our our beta version so that's something that we're definitely really excited about um and share with people so you know again those problems don't have to be you know there anymore you know you can maneuver through the crypto space without having to struggle uh we're we're honestly really just excited to get this product out there honestly like we're we've been working on this for so freaking long and we're just really excited to get this in the hands of people and see their their genuine expressions and the way that they feel about it and you know how we can build further on it and make it better. Definitely. So you talked about closing that seed round, which is vital for any startup and then dropping the beta, getting it into the hands of users. I'm super excited to give this a try. Uh, do you have any idea of when um, that'll be rolling out? Um, you know what? We thought that recently we thought we'd be dropping this beta sometime in February. Um, right now, uh, the, the beta is the beta is majority done. Like everything is there in terms of functionality and stuff. But right now, the reason why we're not releasing it, the reason why that we're not getting it into people's hands right now, is because uh, we really are making sure that the security of it is absolutely paramount. You know, like we're going around connecting with people, security industry experts, and really doing a lot of penetration testing right now, and trying to make sure literally 
any potential route to be hacked right now is absolutely mitigated, especially before we get any form of investment. So like, you know, after getting investment, we'll be hiring a security developer to come on full time, which is obviously going to help. But the, the thing is right now is that, you know, my experience personally is that I'm a front end UI UX developer. We have a our CTO right now. He's worked at Goldman Sachs for, you know, a number of years and he's done stuff regarding security. Um, however, you know, he said he definitely would like more opinion on this before releasing and making sure that everything is good. So people first, everybody's safety first, and then release. So it sounds like uh, you guys are dealing with what every startup is dealing with, and that's, you know, little tweaks and changes that need to be made and kind of perfecting things before rolling it out, uh, which I think is extremely necessary. We've seen too many, you know, hacks and exit scams in this space. So I really like that you guys are make, going through and making sure that you know security is the number one concern. Uh, so I, I'm looking forward to it. Um, I know everyone who's listening will be looking forward to it. Once that rolls out, we'll get we'll get links and we'll get you know everyone involved. Um, so lastly, before I let you go, can you you've dropped you know just so much knowledge on everyone who's listening, especially when we talked about the startup culture and kind of what it takes to create a startup. But can you give us just one overarching tip? You know, if cha-ching ceased to exist, if you had to start over, what is the very first thing you do to get back to where you're at today? Perseverance. I think I, I definitely tapped on that a little bit earlier. When you're creating a startup, when you're going into it again, be 100% prepared for the time commitment and then be prepared to persevere through everything thick and thin. If you are not ready to go in this and persevere, you might as well not start. There we go, nice, short, and simple. Uh, you've been through it, you've had to persevere through the tough times. Uh, so to anyone out there listening, just know that this isn't an easy process and that there are gonna be down times and there are gonna be hard times where you wanna quit. But if you wanna be successful like Tom here has, you're going to need to persevere. So, Tom, I really appreciate you coming on. You've dropped so much knowledge for us. I, I really appreciate you taking the time, and I can't wait until this beta drops so we can give it a try. Awesome. Thank you for having me on. Yeah, I really appreciate it. All right, guys, that wraps up another episode, and I just want to take a quick second to ask you a huge favor. If you found anything in the episode helpful or it's been inspiring to you in any way, I just ask that you share it with your friends, family, anyone you know on social media, um, and hopefully we can help them out as well. Have a good one.